Good morning, folks. I'm sure almost none of you noticed changes in your lives based on last night's geomagnetic storm and the interplanetary shockwave that struck yesterday. But there are people who have lost everything. And in a purely perfect example of my greatest worry come true, tiny, pitiful space weather appears to have damaged one of the primary solar watching satellites. We're taking a detailed look at what happened over the last 24 hours and some other key stories for the day. First, when you come to spaceweathernews.com and look at our star, you wouldn't think anything serious had just happened at Earth. Pretty much a calm scenario. But recall from yesterday that we expected a further rise in solar wind speed, in yellow. We got it as the coronal hole stream really set in, delivering magnetic instability across the globe with isolated disruptions up to level 3. That's getting into fun range. But also recall from our April 29th news program, a tiny CME was being tracked by NASA, expected to hit on May 2nd, and I personally said it wouldn't present much of an impact. Well, I was sort of right and sort of wrong. We can see the impact just after 1600 UTC, only the slightest of speed bumps still in the medium range, and the wave itself was thin and puny as you can see by the low density. But indeed, Despite being a thousand to ten thousand times weaker than what we expect to cause any problems, the primary X-ray detector on GOES-15 shut off at that time. We've still got GOES-13 as a backup and it is running well, but both red and blue just stop right at 1700 as the shockwave engulfed our planet. As of this morning, the devices have still not turned back on, and just for those ultra-suspicious among you, Yes, the other devices aren't working on it either. The SXI has been down since 1700 as well. Based on a few key sites I used to track transformer and electrical fire reports, since the beginning of the solar storm event the incidents have been up 10 to 20 times normal, but luckily the airline industry does appear to have been spared this round. Folks, if you haven't seen the number one risk to Earth, this is what I'm talking about. Tiny space weather taking gator bites at our way of life. What happens when our star decides she's had enough sleep and wakes back up for real? Our planet will be in trouble. Let's come to the sunspots where the departing guys up north gain no complexity whatsoever, and although small and in decay, those trailing seem to want to hold on to the Delta Candidate magnetism despite not knowing what to do with it. New spots coming in require 24 more hours for proper analysis. Remember folks, the earthquake uptick is due any time now, but it shouldn't start while geomagnetic disruptions are holding the energetic disturbance at our planet. They should begin when the magnetosphere calms. Top story today comes out of the ESO. Apparently there are three habitable planets orbiting around one of those super cool brown dwarfs. Remember these can be cool as a cup of coffee or even colder, and apparently this tiny star only 40 light years away is holding a powwow of spheres they're calling the single best life candidate system outside of our own in the history of human searching. Giggity. Folks, if you're not taking the space weather risk seriously, imagine I flicked your arm and you got a compound fracture, torn ligament, and nerve damage. That's how sensitive our planet is right now. Anyone know a good solar lullaby? We need one. Spot of good news, the energy introduction from space drove every low faster than expected, and the weather did not hit Texas again. Here's what we've got in store tonight for the U.S. and other top viewer locations. Also got shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.